G'day everyone, it's Patrick here, the Catasaur Blog Bloke. And what you're looking at here is an illustration from a journal article called Advances in Understanding the Pathophysiology of Lacuna Stroke, a review. It was published on the 1st of October 2018 in the JAMA Neurology Journal, JAMA being the Journal of the American Medical Association. And I haven't been able to find a better illustration, specifically in, in relation to Catasol especially, about the pathophysiology of what is actually happening in our brains. So as you can see here, um, this is a large, an enlarged version of what might be happening in anyone's brain who has a cerebral small vessel disease. Of course, calcium being one that is genetically caused by not stream mutation. So you can see down the bottom here that you have a, a, a larger cerebral vessel, as I call, as I say here, what I'll say is probably a, um, a first order vessel. You then have a penetrating arteriole. Um, and arterioles are quite small, but as you can see here, this explains what's going, well it doesn't explain, but it shows what's happening in terms of the vessel wall thickening and it also stiffens and therefore the lumen, which is the bit that goes down the middle here, gets narrower and right from the start here we can see you've already got reduced blood flow happening. You then go down further and there are smaller arterioles arching off to the left, right and also further down here as well. Now the causes of stroke in catasol are not clots. It's because of this thickening of the arterial walls. If we go further down here on a what they call a second order vessel, further down, further down, and then we've got severe stenosis. So the gap hasn't actually completely closed, but it's narrowed so much that there's not enough blood flow and oxygen getting through. And just here, there's a cerebral micro-infarct. Now, some people might refer to these as TIAs, but they are truly micro-strokes or mini-strokes. If we come back here, further down here, we see a second-order vessel, and there is a complete occlusion. No clot, that is not clot, that is just thickened material from the blood vessel wall. And down here we have a lacuna stroke, which is bigger than a, more, a small micro infarct or micro stroke. Coming down this side, hypoperfused parenchyma on the left here means that there's insufficient oxygen getting through, but it does not show up on normal imaging. It looks like it's okay, but it's not. Coming around this side, this shows blood-brain barrier degradation, which doesn't happen in all cases of catasol, but it can. And white matter hyperintensity. Now, catasol shows up in the deep part of the brain. The deep part of the brain is white matter. These hyperintensities are only called white matter and hyperintensity because that's where they happen. It doesn't mean that you've suddenly got white matter. It was always there. White matter is part of normal brains. Hyperintensity is just a term they use when it shows up on MRI imaging. You can otherwise call this a lesion. And closer to the third vessel, third order vessel, is normal cerebral parenchyma. So that would show up as normal brain tissue. So... Some dominant features of catasol, obviously, the wall thickening, which can get quite severe, and in some cases can close over entirely. Severe stenosis can cause a very small or micro infarct, complete occlusion, or um, closing of the lumen will lead to a full on lacuna stroke. White matter hyperintensity can be seen in various areas of the um, deep part of the brain. Okay, thanks very much. See you next time.